So it's been three long years and I still haven't finished restoring this car. I bought this little Datsun vintage race car back in 2020 as a restoration project. I really thought I'd have it on the track within six months. But three years later, I'm still not done. Uh, it's frustrating. Sometimes I wonder if I'm ever going to finish. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd do a little update on the car, show you where I'm at, show you that. Uh, it's not been completely standing still. All right, so as you can see, I've not been a total slacker. I have managed to get some stuff done. Uh, now, this car spent a year with Nick Stewart at Safe Engineering, and he went through it from front to back, doing a whole lot of engineering work on it. I brought it back home in late 2022 and uh, I took it into the shed here and I put it up on stands and stripped it right back to a bare shell. The underside of the car had all been sandblasted and primed but I slid under there anyway and I sprayed a layer of etch primer and then I sprayed some underbody flex paint on it so that should hopefully provide it with a little bit of protection underneath. Pretty sure the body on this car has been sandblasted at least twice before and the metal on these old Japanese cars is pretty thin anyway so I didn't want to sandblast it again because I didn't want to end up with basically a bag of metal filings so uh, I stripped all the body all the exterior bodywork using a heat gun. It took me days and days, but uh, I felt it was the safest way to uh, to get the old paint off. And then I went through and I prepped the bare metal and I laid down a couple of coats of etch primer and then I put uh, a few layers of build primer on. So next for the outer shell, the gray areas there, is for me to do some block sanding. And when this car was raced back in the 1970s, uh, all the interior, the engine bay and all the front, everything here was all painted black, satin black. So I wanted to replicate that. And that's where my first of several rookie mistakes came in. Uh, for anyone that's ever painted the inside of a race car, you'll know it's an absolute <laughs> job. And I tried to do it all in one hit and went and totally screwed myself. So what happens is that each individual bar that makes up the roll cage, and as you can see this car has got bars going everywhere, but each individual bar requires quite a lot of attention to detail. You've got to basically cover it on all, all the edges. And as you're painting each bar, you're getting overspray on everything that's lower than that bar. So for example, this, this central bar right here, as you're painting this, you're getting overspray on everything that's lower than the bar. And when you go to paint those lower areas, you end up with a really nasty rough texture and that's where I really screwed myself up and so I had to go back and give everything a light sand and then I hit it all with scotch bright and then I went and did each section in stages so I'd do a few bars then I come back and do a few more bars and then I did part of the floor and as you can see I've still got some of the floor to go but the the finish is so much nicer so much nicer now the next area where I screwed up was with these here fender flares. Now this little Datsun 1200 has been a race car since 1975 and in 1977 the then owner Ron Leonard purchased a set of these really cool fiberglass fender flares directly from the Datsun competition parts catalogue. Uh, now back in the 70s most of the Datsun 1200s that were racing in the USA had a set of these flares fitted but they are super rare now and of course I wanted to keep them. Uh, but this car is an old sports car club of America C sedan so for sedan basically the class was for sedans up to 1300 cc's and the maximum wheel width limit for these cars was six inches but I wanted to go a bit wider and so I purchased a set of these revolution wheels and they are eight inches wide now even with a six inch wide wheel, man these flares didn't quite cut it, they just weren't quite wide enough. Uh, and I've got this car now on eight inch wide wheels and so I really wanted to retain the flare and uh, so what I needed to do was widen it so that I could so I could keep it with the car. And so what I decided to do was just slice it along this area here, pull the flare itself away from the backing and then I filled in that section. Uh, but where I screwed up, and again, anyone that's done bodywork and actually knows what they're doing, I should have left the flare 
attached to the car, pot riveted to the car when I was widening it. Um, I pulled them off because I thought I could do a better job, but that actually distorted all the back there and so it didn't sit flush with the bodywork. So then I had to spend weeks basically distorting the backing again to get it so that it was returned or restored back to how it should be. So when I bought this car, it didn't really have doors. It, uh, on the passenger side, it has a, had a skin that was Zeus fastened in place. And on the driver's side, it, uh, just being a left-hand drive car, on the driver's side, basically most of the frame had been cut away and it just had the skin. But I wanted proper functioning doors. And with this being a Datsun 1200 Coupe, you can't actually buy reproduction doors for these cars. So I had to source a couple of old original doors. And I got a pretty good deal on two doors, uh, and uh, they needed a lot of work, being 50 year old doors of course. But the driver's side, this side here, it was way heavier than the other side, even though it looked nicer on the surface. But when I stripped it back to bare metal, I found that uh, there's a big chunk of lead in here. It was pretty nasty and there's really no way to fix it because it had been hit, filled with lead and uh, not properly repaired. So what I did was I got Nick Stewart at Safe Engineering, who did all the engineering work on this car when I bought it. I got him to fit the original door skin that came with the car with the donor door frame. And as you can see, I've left the inside of the skin as it was with, uh, with all the stickers and everything that Brad Lewis, one of the previous owners, had put in there, uh, including old SCCA runoff stickers and stuff. So you'll never see it because I'm going to have door cards, so that will get covered up. But, you know, in years from now, a future owner might have to pull, a, pull the door skin off and um, they'll sort of discover this little hidden treasure. <laughs> so that's about it, I suppose. Uh, that's where we're at at the moment. Sometimes I think with this car, I'm not getting anywhere and I get frustrated because I feel like I'm moving too slow. And then I discover some old photos of what it looked like when I first bought it. And I realise that uh, that progress actually has been pretty good. Uh, I'll do a couple of before and afters of the engine bay and the front suspension just so you can see what I mean. But uh, yeah, I expect to have paint on the body hopefully in the next few weeks and, uh, and I'll provide another update then and also I'll provide an update on the drivetrain that I have for this car. I've got a pretty stout little A-series race motor uh, that I bought that's going into this thing and should get it humming along pretty nicely. So. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little update and uh, be sure to like and uh, while you're there, hit the subscribe button and uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time guys. Cheers, bye.